Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update Games Edition. I'm Seamus Byrne, welcome to Friday the 3rd of April. Lots of April Fool's gags in gaming this week. Plenty of dumb stuff, but a couple of standouts worth mentioning. For mine, the Umbrella Corporation's request for a government bailout was pretty inspired, as was Blizzard's new Terran vehicle, the Terratron. More than meets the eye, kids. But top marks go to Wizards of the Coast and Penny Arcade for their announcement of Witcher Locks as a character class for Dungeons and Dragons. These Fool's Day gags, I think, are always best when they're kind of ultimately a well-written joke and not just some kind of attempt to prank people out and then at midday say, haha, it was pretend. Anyway, so this Witcher Lock class preview is just Game Geek Comedy Gold. I've got some links to some of these gags up at midnightupdate.com. Speaking of having a bit of a laugh, now if you haven't seen the great viral video campaign from Norton promoting their gamer-friendly security software, it's well worth a look. There's a few in the series, but the highlight has to be the flag. It's a deadpan post-mortem sort of war style on an in-game incident where somebody's antivirus software started a full system scan at the wrong moment with disastrous consequences for John4356783 and his teammates. I've embedded the video at midnightupdate.com for your viewing pleasure. Nintendo DSi hits shelves this week, and I'm going to be fascinated to see if anybody really cares. Music, photos, maybe if this thing had a phone, it could be the clamshell solution for those who've missed their original side talk and engage action. I'm sure we're going to hear lots about the stats very soon, but I get the feeling that only the most rabid Japanese fanboys are going to be the ones who see this as a must-have update. Now, of course, if Aussies go and nab this thing in droves, I'm either going to blame K Rudd and his $900 bonus for helping a bunch of people make rash gaming decisions, or I think I'll just blame the general breakdown of society. There's a really cool little periodic table of game controller history doing the rounds online right now, and it's pretty damn cool. There's also not much else to say about it. Periodic table, game controllers, history, evolution kind of thing. Looks really, really cool. Now, the best place that, well, where I found it was over at Trembling Hand. This is actually a new sort of gaming blog. It's being run by David Kidd and Tim Dean, two former editors of PC Authority, now writing this game's blog in their spare time. So while you're there, definitely a site worth bookmarking or grabbing the RSS feed. Game Talk, and this week I'm going to mention WWE Legends of WrestleMania. I found this thing a lot of fun if you're a retro wrestling sort of fan. But it seems that there's a lot of divided opinion amongst game reviewers because, and I'm not going to disagree, it's a bit of a light addition compared with the size and depth of THQ's usual annual WWE titles. I'm even going to agree that it is a bit flat at times and maybe repetitive, but if you're looking for some genuine nostalgia side of the whole wrestling thing, including a lot of classic video, plus great all-time wrestling favorites as playable characters. This thing is a lot of fun, and single player, again, it doesn't offer all that much, but this is really about some mates sitting around on the couch having a laugh. So for many, I guess in that context, well worth checking out, perhaps an ideal weekend rental, and then you see where it goes from there. Last time I was there was the last of the over-the-top shows in 2006, but right now I'm finalizing plans to make my way back to E3 this June. Damn excited by a lot of what's in development right now, so I thought it'd be great to take Midnight Update on the road to bring daily coverage from LA. Now, also some really cool news that I've just heard about the protagonist of that brilliant gaming documentary, The King of Kong, Steve Wiebe. He's gonna be there on June the 2nd to have a fresh shot at claiming the high score for Donkey Kong from Arch Nemesis, perhaps, Billy Mitchell. I can hardly wait to check that out. Now, if you haven't watched King of Kong, it is a great documentary, even if you don't care about games. But you do, so go watch it this weekend already. And that's all for tonight's update. Thank you very much for stopping by. Join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time for Daily Geek News. And for more coverage, visit midnightupdate.com.